Ryan here. And uh, today we are proud to announce that this is the end of our four part test series. Uh, we've been covering all time periods from like the Stone Age, the Neolithic era, uh, covering the tribal, islander, and uh, uh, ancient peoples. Uh, we've also, we've already tested that. Uh, our Kabuto's done very well and our uh, Dole. Uh, we have covered uh, the Bronze Age, the Mycenaean Age, uh, the age of the early hoplite, the Greek. You might want to go check that out if you haven't seen it. Uh, and the Spartan, which was the beginning of the, the actual Iron Age. So we've covered that as well. Uh, it performed well. Everything performed well. And we did the Viking Age up to the Norman, uh, up to the uh, Norman conquerors who conquered England. Uh, and uh, it did well against all those weapons, the best I could pick from there. Today we're doing the knight. Uh, we're doing it in the style of like Deadliest Warrior, uh, where they use knightly weapons. Uh, we have weapons from the transitional era as well, because it's the late Middle Ages. So it'll also cover uh, William Wallace's time period as well, because I figured, what should I use? Everybody used to watch my old videos where I used to contest Deadliest Warrior. And we have a samurai right here, samurai armor from Iron Mountain Armory. So I figured let's go ahead and have some fun with it. We even have a flail in the background. Uh, we have a long sword, which we shall start with. This is a late century long sword from the 16th century, uh, type 20. Very elegant design and a cutter. We're going to try that out on the Kabuto first. Uh, and then we shall move into a more needle-like bodkin. Uh, and then figure out where we go from here. What weapons do I use? We'll see. Depends on how they perform, and we'll see if we can finish the samurai or our Valkyria off today. We know this is a female mannequin here. But anyway, let's get going uh, without a veil. This is an important part of the test. Uh, historically, we know that uh, Europeans a lot of times wore arming caps. Uh, we even hear some stories of uh, ancient warriors using their hair as an arming cap. And the uh, chalmage was a, uh, the top knot or the uh, actual piece of hair that comes over, much like you see on sumo wrestlers modernly, but now it's a flary hairstyle. But what would happen is wearing it in court and stuff, it would kind of be put in a position like this. And this was actually their hair that came out of their head. But in this situation, it's for battle. This would be pulled over like this, kind of like a mohawk or something pulled across the top of your head. But this provided an enormous amount of padding. Since uh, our Ivar Draugr head here has no uh, hair of his own, we're going to give him his own uh, red uh, chanmagi. Uh, and we're going to take our uh, hachimaki, which is a headband, not like in uh, uh, the Karate Kid, but more like a kendo practitioner would wear. This is a bit uh, light cloth, lighter than they would use, but I'm going to put this over the actual head and try to get it on here properly. And this is going to come back and secure our chanmagi and help protect his head from damage. This is a very important part of our testing because the helm has a cloth liner like most historical helms do and helps hold the helm from your head like strapping would. But we know that padding aids tremendously. This head's been tested. I'm not going to lie, with another weapon, uh, the bog axe, and through another helmet, it actually cut through that helmet and into the head. So hopefully this is going to give him lots of protection, uh, and we're going to start off with a very brutal weapon. We have our hachi here, or our dome. Uh, we have our minpo. Uh, minpo yorari means uh, face armor. We have our uh, hana, uh -huh. our kari, our uh, shiki shikiro our Fuchigachi Mon here and our Fuchigachi. So we have the whole helmet. And now we cover the late heyday of the medieval knight. Uh, late 16th century, I have a German longsword. Uh, and this is a type 20. You're going by uh, your oak shot uh, typology. It's a beautiful design. This is the height of evolution of the longsword. This is also a cutter. Uh, it's not just for thrusting and very rigid. Some long swords were designed in that manner. And you're going to ask yourself, why don't I have sword? Uh, in previous videos, we used the Dane axe. Uh, we used a club. We used a shillelagh uh, made out of mesquite, a very hard wood here, uh, and not even totally dried out. Uh, and the damage, although it was quite extreme, 
did not seem to kill our samurai with his uh, chanmagi and his uh, hachimaki on, which is his headscarf and his hair plus the lining of the helmet from Iron Mountain Armory. Uh, apparently the dents are in there, they look horrible, most of these dents look terrible, uh, but they're unable to hit the head. If they did hit the head, they caused very little damage, if any. Maybe the club did, but as we reanalyze it, we're thinking it was damaged from the previous test because this is an old test head. We did that because we didn't see the point in making a special head for this because if you look on the face, you're going to see that it has breaks and tears in it from the chin strap as the helms hit. Uh, ballistics gel doesn't hold up to being strapped like a human face. You can't strap it. Uh, it's warm in South Texas right now, so even if I made a brand new head to go through this series of testing and all these weapons, uh, you would still see injuries on there that would maybe be able to chafe wounds or, or bruising or scraping or something from you wearing your armor, like armor bites, but they look much worse on the ballistics show. So without further ado, let's get going. I'm going to use the long sword because this is the sword that the Viking Age, we had the Viking Sword, which was a lot more devastating in the cut, which is what we're doing to the head, than most uh, later century arming swords because they went more for the thrust, which like I said, we're not exploiting gaps or niches in this video because we're testing the metal itself. We're testing the armor to see if it can be cut or if he can be wounded through it. So I shall start off with a Zretchow. I'm thinking about coming in this way, possibly, but I know this is the more powerful of the cut. The reason this is the more powerful of a cut, uh, you can see in a video I chopped in the side of the head and almost went completely through. Our spines do go up through the head, so uh, we stopped on the spine technically, but it's still an extremely powerful blow. And in this position, it's a great defense. This is something that, let's say, uh, someone from the later century was using German longsword against a uh, samurai. He might not expect the style, so it's a cut he might get in on. I think I'll start off with that right side hit right in here. Ah! Sorry, a little scream there. This has an extreme cutting ability and power as you can see what happened here. If anything might have hit the head, because it's Chamagi, Chamagi is right here. This might have. Let's see if there's any damage to the sword. We have caused no real damage to the sword. I could touch the edge up, but we're pretty good here. The sword held up extremely well. By the way, this is a medieval shop sword. I love this sword. Most of the weapons we've tested on it that were European have been the medieval shop. Not say anything bad about the weapons, just armor like helmets aren't designed to cut through. You cannot slice through the entire helmet. Uh, they tend to dent in and crease. You might get a slight cutting in the surface area, but you don't get a cut all the way through a helmet line. If you do, there's something seriously wrong with your helm or your kabuto if it cuts between the three. If anything, this might be the one that did some damage to it. It's a pretty nasty dent. That's where it hit here. That's one of the longest, deepest cuts we've got. Maybe next to this one, but some of the bending and so on here might have made it not go as deep, the Viking Age sword. But still, that's, that's there. Let's go ahead and undo our Hachimaki. If I don't pronounce some of these Japanese words right, I do not fluently speak Japanese. I think he's okay. He survived the longsword hit. And that is something that might... just hit him with a crowbar. True, true. We, we can finish this head off when we get done. I'm thinking about doing that with the Dane Axe, because I don't think I've ever used the actual Dane Axe on a head. can't remember it. Enough of this Kabuto and this Chanmagi. I've had so much. Let's cut that off. See what this Dane Axe would have done without the Kabuto and that Chanmagi. Knock the wood out. Oh well, I did, and I'm stuck in the head. <laughs> but that gives you an idea what the Dane Axe would do without a proper head protection. And I would say that the Iron Mountain Armory uh, Kabuto, be it seem thin and light and allow lots of mobility, uh, so you might even be able to evade the blow, and it eats up kinetic energy. 
uh, without it, you'd be dead. The Dane Axe would kill you. So it definitely did its job. This shows you an example of how devastating the Dane Axe truly really is. Hard. This is probably the first time I've ever got to really test the Dane Axe on a head. Oh! Now that is some Viking gore I like to see. <laughs> Although axes aren't elegant like swords, you still see that it went all the way through. And for this test, our spines sometimes can give way through lots of testing and shatter that had a double spine. So that ax is devastating. Came through it at an angle and just shattered and cut all the way through enough that the head flew off. The top is just opened up like unbelievably. be as scientific as possible uh, and fair. Uh, so what I've done is I've got the dough uh, right here on our mannequin. Some of you might recognize Lola or Valkyria or uh, Valkyrie. Uh, it's a mannequin. Uh, it is a female mannequin, but we've got it set up in such a way this time where the gel protrudes more. Uh, we've actually got it where the gel cannot move around inside and get damaged just by the actual shell of the mannequin. Uh, and on top of that, we have proper clothing under it. We have our uh, Hakama, and then we have our kimono on top. But to further add to this, what we've done is a lot of times there would be a silk uh, obi that wrapped around the body, much like the Sarashi, underneath the armor. So this mannequin actually has that over the uh, kimono. It's wrapped around and around, kind of acting like gambeson in a way. It helps reinforce areas where the dull might make contact with the body at the bottom because you see it's domed to keep it away from the chest in case something were to slightly pierce it it won't injure you but over our analog ballistics gel that's in here our jelly belly as i could like to call it uh which is a, a hardcore gel uh probably about 20 percent gel uh it should give us an accurate uh account if something does go through if it actually wounded or injured our uh samurai much better uh, than the one we did our debunking video on where they had to say straw or a stuffed uh, sand mannequin or something that was very ragdoll like. Uh, it is tied. I'm not using a proper sarashi on the outside. I'm using one that's more of a shell one and hopefully I don't hit it, but I've got it to help secure it to our post. It can give and move. This is not solid as most people would think, you know, something solid, you know, you just put it up against a tree and try to shoot uh, arrows into it or are thrusted. Uh, no, this gives and it could possibly get knocked loose, but I doubt it with a tide. Uh, hopefully uh, our uh, samurai today holds up well and we're going to mostly focus on this area right here. This is where the actual ballistics gel is in this area uh, and we're going to see what happens in, in the uh, dole, uh, dole area here. Uh, we might do a little testing on some of the other stuff, but this is a mannequin, so these are not proper analogs. So the main focus is to test the metal itself, the steel from Iron Mountain Armory, and see if it can hold up to all the weapons that we will be testing today. I have my recurve here, my trusty recurve, that's uh, 65 to 70 pounds raw at full length. These are long arrows. I have my needle style bodkin or my long bodkin, which were used later period. I am an armored archer. Yes, they did have them, uh, usually lightly armored. I have my backup weapon. I could have had a buckler possibly or a, da a dagger or dirk. Uh, like a uh, uh, Bullock's dagger or a, uh, something like that to fight people in armor, but I'm gonna go ahead and shoot my arrow My goal would be to stay at a distance and hopefully the stuff would keep me alive if any other archer shot at me So we'll go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot at this and see how much damage that this uh, Bodkin makes if it makes a difference or not It seems that it might have gone a little deeper. These are waxed in, so to stop abruptly caused it to, it's a hard, heavy wax-like substance used to hold it in. So it actually, uh, it actually separated. Let's go ahead and set our stuff to one side here. Uh, camera. Uh, and we're gonna need to see what that does. If it did something, it'll be amazing. I don't think we have a outright kill because of the depth. 
but we know that's a long bodkin. Uh, did it pierce? The, it went into the cloth a little bit. Looks like it may have made a tiny... Nothing. No, it didn't quite make it. Uh, you would have had a small bruise. Got into the cloth. But if, uh, this made it through. I'm going to have to push it through maybe. No, I don't even know if I can do that. I can see if I can get it out. Okay. This would definitely, this is the greatest thing we've done so far. This samurai would have had this up against their flesh, eating into them all day, pestering them. And enough of these would probably, unless you hit a niche, would uh, pretty much uh, give them a bad day. If I can get, get it out. Good luck. I'm going to go. You may have to leave it in here. Well, that was very interesting. Although we got almost two inches of penetration, he was still not wounded, still not injured. So that means that uh, the debunking I did, uh, where it slipped in between the plates, I do not believe that went through the plates, or I think they would have shown the uh, actual hole. Plus ones that are laced together are more likely to give and harder to get through the plates than a solid dough like this one. Uh, after that took place, I'm sure our samurai is very angry, or Ashigeru, and I'm a medieval archer who shouldn't probably even be engaging with him or uh, fighting him. Uh, and let's say he's or a knight, possibly, using a bow at the time, lightly armored, and I'm being attacked by samurai. But uh, after he's hit, I'm sure he'd be charging me. He wouldn't want me to loose any more arrows in his direction. I wonder what my uh, knightly style arming sword will do. It's a shorter version. Uh, it's very much uh, something that they could have used later century, like the archer I'm supposed to be. And they were designed for thrusting in niches. But let's say I'm scared. And I already know my arrow went in, but I don't know how well. So I just thrust in vain and maybe hit him right in that dome. But I'm going to rush to engage him at the same time. Like the arrow. I have a little bitty uh, nick in the actual armor itself. So I had nothing. I was about like my spear thrust that hit in the same area and one is unable to go through. I think he's fine and I think possibly uh, the armor I'm wearing might protect me, uh, may have protected me, may not have protected me. Uh, but I think he would have probably finished me after that being a full armor. All right, lad, I've had about enough of you. And you know what happens when I say that. You do, you people know out there. All right, I've had about enough of you, lad. I'm going to take your freaking head off. Ah! 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 Freedom! I think it works well. <laughs>
Oh! Something went flying. I think we lost our ball. You lost your ball. No damage. I remember I told you this is a cheesy reproduction. No damage at all that I can tell. We'll look at the actual, other than the dent, which I'm sure he would have felt that. That would have knocked the wind out of him maybe, but I doubt there's any damage to the actual gel. Uh, I'm going to not continue with this probably after seeing that. You lost your ball. Yeah, oh, the chain's not made very well. We've used this in many videos before, but I thought it'd be something different. You lost the ball. I don't believe it, but he didn't go flying anywhere and he's fine. All right. Now that is Wallace would have uh, i tried some funky weapon uh not a very high quality one it did wind the samurai so let's go ahead and see if i can uh draw a sword from my back i bet i can't ha 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 everybody talks of this and it's true can you draw a sword from your back like this i'm wondering i'm doing this as something extra in the video uh with this baldric maybe if you're careful, because it gives and moves, but yeah, not like they did in the movies and stuff. No, by any means. Did I get it out? Finally, yay! But everybody knows that, that that's a movie thing. Normally people didn't carry swords and long sheaths on their back. Although this does come with one, and if you weren't going to try to draw it and just carry it, uh, it's not a bad sword. I've done a lot with this. I cut through one head into the other. I've done double decapitations. This old Deadliest Warrior 2 wasn't too wrong on that, uh, showing the sword could go through two necks. I totally agree on that. I don't know about the third one. We never tried it. I would guess it would. It'll go through a complete skull into another head, injuring the man badly if they're unarmored. Ah! Ah! But the cleanse! Everybody's back, could I? Ah! 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 Now that was funky. His friend tried to protect him. I grazed the other hill, uh, Kabuto, lightly. And I hit the, uh, we might want to move him back. We've got to leave that in the video. It's hard to see in a big Sugarloaf helm. I hit this Gilmer here first. We hit the visor and we hit the piece that's designed to protect the cord. It didn't do much damage to the helm at all, but I think it slowed it down. All right, other than doing a little more of a indentation or a dent in our uh, Kabuto, I don't think cutting or thrusting uh, with the claymore or the claymore is going to do any more good. A lot of people even argue that they're too heavy to be used on the battlefield and uh, didn't do enough damage against later century armor that they were probably just bearing swords. I think they started out as early great swords and very usable as a, as a really massive long sword that's out of the long sword category and as it went on it turned into a, uh, you know, maybe more of a bearing sword. Who knows? But people still fought with great swords later century until you get to the Renaissance here and you get the really great swords, which were not in that period here. Uh, William Wallace might have chose after hitting with no avail and having a man in the way, because there's a lot over here, will not get out of their friggin' way, uh, might have chose to uh, use a arming sword, and it's a knightly sword. So let's see what I can do with it. Maybe I can hit him in the uh, sword, uh, maybe hit him in the body, uh, just see if it does anything. Let's try it out. Ooh, ooh, I cut a cord. I don't think that hurt our man at all. Ah! Same thing happened for a massive Wallace thrust, except I got stuck a little bit. Went through the double layer. Did not go in. Let's see if we can hit it. Turn the edge down and cut some of the strapping, which sucks. I'll have to replace that later. Try one more time. Oh! Getting stretched, that's better. I don't think sword hits are the way to go with this. I really, really don't. 
Uh, let's try a soda egg screw so see what happens. Oh! That time we got lucky, it didn't cut anything, but we do have some cuts into the metal. We might want to check this out, uh, but I think if Wallace was going to use this sword, he'd have to use his skills against the samurai uh, and get niches. He'd have to get lucky under the arm, maybe get under the kare, uh, stab in the eye, maybe up under the uh, shikuro. Uh, you know, maybe get inside the thigh like we've done before. He probably could come inside here, maybe get lucky and get inside the uh, Hadate. Let's test the Hadate one time though before he's looking at me. Oh! We didn't cut the cord, but as layered as the Hadate is, I didn't think it was going to do anything. Let's go ahead and check it out. Hadate is slightly bent in. Not much. Okay, let's see where else we hit. The scratches up here are fine. Other than hit over here, hit here, nothing. One I did cut here. one of these. I will have to repair this. I had cut one of the cords that holds the uh, Shikoro style armor down here. Oh, we hit this and cut, cut the cords, but he was totally protected. I don't know if that would have hurt his genitalia any there or hers, uh, but yeah, I would not want to get hit there, but I think that they lived. What did we do over here? A slight scratch in the paint. Yeah, middle. Uh, it actually scratched the metal. That's a very sharp edge. Uh, the one hit where it turned on me, uh, it's just very difficult when hitting metal not to keep the blade from doing such things. It's easier if you're cutting materials that you can actually cut. It stops it so abruptly. Some people argue edge alignment, but I think it's just because I'm hitting metal. All right, I'm pretty much disgusted with this. And I think it's time to bring out the bullocks. Oh, the Bullock's Dagger, and we shall see what happens. Might have killed our samurai here. Maybe. Maybe. I think because of the But all these hits where I went ballistic on his uh, dole, which is, which is not what you do, didn't do much of anything. We've got an interesting thrust right here. Let's check these out. I did cut through there. I did thrust into the side, I think, through the amount of cloth that's there. I think I would have killed our samurai with no uh, kusari or uh, karuda plates. So that's why I did that, to show how hard it was just to get in there with the guy standing there and me spazzing out in a rage, a berserker rage. Got a hole here. And to give me something to sew, I'm guessing. I don't think that went through. We're going to look in a second and look at all this damage here. I hit here. But remember, this stuff dented it in further than it was. This stuff wasn't that close to the body when we started. But we need to look at that gel and just see what kind of damage it actually has. I think our uh, Scottish uh, Dirk has done a really good job. Our uh, Bullock's Dagger. Bullock's Dagger. Well, it was easier to do damage to this when you can aim easier. Yeah. In smaller regions. And being able to hit and... in here if we were grappling, which he would have been really good at his skills as well. It would have been difficult for Wallace to get one in there, but he possibly could have. Remind me that I need to pick up some black thread and fix that now. Yeah. Okay, let's check out this body. And go get your armor off a little bit before you die of heat stroke. I know. I... Take your head off. Get some drink in you. Well, no, I'm going to be up here while we do it. I'll be here. Okay. I just got to keep this sword over here. Thank you. And the bullet should be right here. That was definitely probably a kill because it went into the actual mannequin. And the mannequin is a bit tougher than actual flesh. See what it looks like on the inside? Let's check this out. How many holes do we have? None in the cloth still. Ooh. We have a tiny nick here, but. I don't know how we but got that, but that's not even really a nick. I think the cloth it. caused it. This here is caused from it being in the mannequin and under compression. When it gets hit, it compresses the gel, which would resemble, resemble bruising. The stuff you're seeing here is not from any kind of attack. It's from bruising. Nothing actually pierced the gel. That means our samurai has totally lived wearing Iron Mountain Armory's uh, dull. The only thing that he had that was a problem is this going through. This going through did not go into the body. But even though it's almost two inches, what they claim on the show would have uh, hit him in the intestine and killed him, was unable to go through the layers of cloth that would be wrapped around and the kimono. So 
he would have had a, a nuisance for me. And the, the blow in the body, a nuisance. Maybe that first club attack might have dazed him, uh, but they had arrow bow for the same reason to, to nail people and stuff like that. Uh, the flail, I didn't see any great advantage to that. It was a cheesy flail and we broke it in the process. The you reason I didn't rolls. continue with the claymore, I knew it was just going to keep caving it in and we wouldn't have any other testing uh, fairly. It would have been too caved into the body and you might have gotten wounds to the actual gel that would not have taken place unless you had lots of attacks to beat and beat and beat on your samurai. I think and this is very well. And unluckily our things, uh, in reality, a person would move. A oh, dummy, most certainly. Most our certainly. dummy stands still. Oh, definitely, definitely. That's why one hit for most of them is about fear. It's very true, very true. And I didn't want to overdo it, like if I had bad edge alignment or something went wrong. Uh, that's what would happen in battle. This man would be moving. He's not going to let you do any of that. Even I had trouble thrusting under the arm properly and getting a good thrust that went into the mannequin, which the mannequin is very tough. But that shows you how difficult it would be and how much adrenaline and in the heat I am today. It's all, all over 100 degrees uh, in South Texas. So I put on as much armor as I could wear. I had some arms and legs I could have thrown on that would be transitional. Some, but I decided after I got a certain amount of armor on, I got up to about 60 pounds or so, I decided to quit because this is a very heavy... Uh, coat of arms. Uh, well, yeah, a, a coat of plates. Uh, this is uh, almost quarter inch steel. I made this years ago and I overdid it. It's thicker than the Visby coat of plates. I mean, this would stop the uh, small handguns that I'm wearing with all this mail. And I have a mantle, a coif. Uh, yeah, I'm wearing and lots of mail. It would cover all the mail that I would have on the rest of my body if I had more mail. So it's a fair <laughs> test. But anyway, I hope you've all enjoyed our episode. Iron Mountain Armory has certainly done its job in all means. It even protected this poor guy over here who's sitting over minding his own business when Wallace got carried away and hit him but uh, maybe slowed the blow down a little bit. But anyway, I hope you all have enjoyed our episode. I want to thank Iron Mountain Armory once again for this awesome armor and for helping us do a crowdfunding project and obtain it. Uh, we will be doing more with the armor, maybe more tests. Give us uh, input down below what you'd like to see tested on it, uh, which we will up our bow. We're going to get an actual war bow that's really high powered later. It might actually be able to injure the samurai, but I'm not sure if that's a poundage that the samurai would have used with the uni. Uh, I would also like to thank Object Stay Art because it's the last video one more time for helping us with our Neolithic arrows. Be sure to check that video out if you haven't seen it. Uh, and I'd like to thank Medieval Shot for a lot of the weapons that we used that held up very well and had very good steel, the EN45. Uh, I would like to thank Neil Burridge uh, for all the bronze weapons that performed as well as steel or iron. Uh, I'd like to thank Scary Larry, the guy who helped forge our uh, sword that we had many, many years ago. That's pretty crude, but it represents a Xyphos for the... Uh, age of the Spartan and 300 and Leonidas and all that. So technically, I was hoping everybody would have some fun with this and we'd do what Deadliest Warrior should have done and tested armor properly. Uh, this is a medium grade armor or a lighter grade armor. I'd say medium grade compared to Japanese gauges. They did have stuff, the only disclaimer I have, they had stuff up to three millimeters thick that was extremely heavy. You wouldn't be able to move as well as you can in this or fight as well because you're dull and your uh, hachi would be extremely heavy. The rest would be about the same gauge as the stuff you see here because it's all free-flowing and free-floating and it did what it needed to do. So technically what they do nowadays, you have your ballistic vest and your Kevlar helmet. Technically that's all they had. Uh, so I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, and as always, uh, Farvel. Oh! Oh, she's dead! No! No! The samurai is dead and I didn't kill it! No! 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 Oh. You're not in trouble. Oh. It's funny watching Daddy. <laughs> he wanted to kill her through the armor. But that's that proved yes, you can yeah, still even a child could jelly. kill a man unarmored just pushing through the flesh with a nice sharp spear. Now. Uh, good luck getting your spear out though. Good job, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Get the guts. Get the guts. Good job! Good job, Diao! The Weapon Master has done his job as well! <laughs> and he's so cute doing it. Good job, Diao!